All righty. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming to the Stormwater Board meeting on a special Monday, November 14th of 2022. If you can call the word of this meeting, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, recording secretary Wendy, can you please start with the roll call? Ryan Lasek? Here. Patrick Conlon? Here. Benji Kinchlow? Here. Donald Oliphant? Here. Chris Salatas? Present. Eric Bosma? Here. Robert Carnahan? Here. And Randy Schmidt? Here. Did everyone have a chance to review the October 11th, 2022 um, minutes from our stormwater meeting? Yes. Any uh, changes, or can I make a motion to approve the minutes? Oh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from October 11th. I'll second the motion. All right. Thank you. Okay. Brian Lisek? Yes. Patrick Conlon? Yes. Benji Kinchlow? Yes. All right. Getting into old business drainage issues at 90. 80 West, 129th. Uh, it's Tim's parcel. It's going to be done maybe over the winter if we can get into it with decent weather, or it's probably maybe spring. Yeah. They're incredibly busy right now. So it's, yeah. it's on the radar, but it's low priority. Okay. We'll keep that on old business and address next meeting. Uh, moving on to update items. Anything that we should be relating to Chuck Becker, 7513 West, 136 Ave? Nothing new. Okay. How about over on update item B, Schubert and Dodge Street? Nothing new. No. All right. Moving on to update item C, how about the woods of Cedar Creek? Nope, nothing new. This will kind of get into one of our new business items. A lot of these will, but... Okay. Moving on to item D, Julian Gibbons. Can I bring home with them? No, not yet. <laughs> um, we did, Tyler and I go went over there when the last real big rainstorm we had. The ditch that he dug is like it looks like a raging river now so I don't know where that water is coming from or why it's rushing down there but it was on the north side of 145th yeah it a, it's close to what, eight nine eight ten acres so remember I mentioned last meeting that that his culvert pipe looked a little high well I mean it, it was flowing pretty good really good there okay so I mean but it when it comes down that ditch, it goes right to a 90 into that culvert pipe. So I don't know what your idea would be. The, I mean, well, I think that, well, based on how the camera goes, I'm, I'm betting that's an old CMT that's coming out. Regardless, we have two on 145th that need to come out. Yeah. They're both some old CMTs that are likely rusted out. Um, but yeah, it's just we need to figure out what's going on in her yard. Yeah, I need to get with Tony, and they kind of show us a little bit on the camera truck but we all got so busy the last couple of weeks so um so if i can get out there and re-camera all the rest of that then we can go from there i guess okay. all right let's keep that on update items how about the monastery south so issues. tim and i went out there it's kind of on the north block um, so we had an exhibit at the last meeting that kind of showed where some of the storm drains are, like 175 foot feet to the east and one's 125 feet to the west. Um, it's really just kind of a spongy area along their shared lot line. Um, the houses are in no danger of flooding, they're quite a bit higher. Um, based on the spacing of the inlets, I, it's my recommendation that it's a homeowner issue. 
I mean, the spacing is more than in compliance. Um, it really just turns into a landscaping exercise of trying to get some pitch maybe to either one of them. Can't really run another pipe out there, even an underdrain, because that's when they were installing utilities and rear guards. So there's pedestals out there. You're going to be fighting it hard. And the fact that he has inlets, it's just flat to there. Lush. <laughs> but I don't think you want to get into these situations because there's likely a ton of these in town. Yeah. So it's our recommendation that it's a homeowner issue. I'm going back through my notes. What was the ask? It's just spongy out there. I mean, you can see on the topo up there. I mean, there's a ton of fall from like the front of the house's back. It's six feet of fall. So, the, I mean, part of the problem with this subdivision in the first place is that they water their lawn like six times a day. <laughs> there's a reason their grass is like super lush. So, I mean, that's part of the issue. I mean, yes, it's flat back there, but I mean, this is this was constructed kind of later. It's an older subdivision, but some of these northern lots were actually constructed after our rear yard standards came into play because it just took forever to build out from 08. Schilling's actually built this section of it. Mm -hmm. So that's probably one reason that the spacing actually is adequate. But it's just a little flat, and they're actually kind of at a high point. Mm -hmm. It's just, I mean, the, the things never get any kind of, I mean, they're, they're watering likely when it's raining out. Because mm -hmm. they're HOA, the yeah, they're HOA controlled um, sprinkler systems, so I, I wouldn't want to touch it. But that's my recommendation. Yeah. I agree. It can open up a whole can of worms and start bringing a bunch of equipment back there. And it seems to be something that can be controlled from a uh, little landscaping exercise. Or I mean, they certainly have the grades. I mean, his southern neighbor actually has less pitch away from his house, and he's not the one who's bringing it up even. So, um, because I mean, we were out there. I think right after they mowed, and even in their front yards. Like you, they got like deep rivets from like the uh, the lawnmower equipment, just because it's so always like wet out there. Cause they just are always yeah. watering. So combine that to the back, and you have no pitch. I mean, it's going to be a little spongy. Yeah. I don't think Mr. Toth is online this time, but that's what we found. Yes, yeah, part of not actually being an issue that was caused by the town or everything else. There's, I think, there's outstanding issues that are uh, put back on the homeowner. Yeah, I mean, the structures aren't any kind of danger. Um, I think a few of them do have basements, but I don't think. I think a lot of them are tied in the, the sump pumps, so it's not even a, a nuisance range thing. It's, yeah, partially being created by how much they water and it's just a little flat at the high point. Yeah. Like we're talking a couple inches. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, if there's, we'll see what they say and have they re come back to the town at all and mm -hmm. ask any questions. <coughs> Mr. Toth has been in texting communications with our director of operations, um, and naturally he disagrees with the assessment that it's a citizen's issue, but that's kind of where it's stopped. I mean, I've always argued there is some break point about town responsibility and homeowner responsibility, and that is a gray area, I admit, but um, in cases like this, when it's a new subdivision, the spacing's good, because a lot of these, the spacing isn't good. Monster North is a good example of that. You know, when we're 500 feet from an inlet, perhaps it makes a little more sense to correct that. But literally, when we have inlets within less than 150 feet, when our ordinance is 300 feet, um, 
and there's no structure, you know, endangerment, and it's literally just a wet, like, very far portion of their property, very far from their home. I don't think the town wants to get into that because this is a newer subdivision. I guarantee you have this problem in your older subdivisions. Yeah. I got Where a there feeling. There is no stormwater you, infrastructure. Yeah. You don't have enough money in yeah. the yeah. budget to fix all no. these issues. And I got a feeling there's going to be a lot more of these that are going to start popping up in the next couple of years because we just had another one in Lakeside. Same thing, same type of thing. Where in Lakeside? Yeah. Wow. Where it's, it's a high spot in their yard and it's flooding. And we went over there and the guy that was behind them built his property up like this so he could put a in-ground pool and they got a huge deck. And, and now the guy's having a little bit of water on the corner of his property. And well, we've always said, even by doing, even as built reviews, we only require property corner grades in the rear like that. So yeah. there's very easily, and this happens a lot, but there's just a belly in between those two points that we'll never catch. Even inspectors can't catch that because it's so small, you just can't do it. I mean, and in cases like that, I mean, no. flooding. But yeah, you got people that are putting in landscaping, putting in fences, yeah. that are changing the grade from time to time as well. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to police that. Yeah. And then they come back to the town, like, what happened? And you're like, what do you mean, what happened? Yeah. There is a part of being a homeowner that you have to deal with items. Like, we can't deal with everything. No town's built for that. Right. No. So how do we police it, police this the right way and make sure that they're, he's not going to go out there and put... 200 yards of dirt to make sure. Uh, typically, if you, if you put, grade. if you start raising your property by what? What's the threshold for a fill permit? Four inches. Four inches, you're supposed to get a permit for it. And that's how you police it. But again, you're supposed to put six inches in it. Like yeah. a homeowner wants to build a pool or something, and they have like weird tie in grades, and they just go ahead and do it. Yeah. Well, if they don't pull a permit for it, yeah. and they just go and do it on a weekend when all of our inspectors yeah. are at home, and it's in a backyard. Unless somebody calls on them or something. Yeah. Right. Or none the wiser. I'll send you that um, address in Lakeside. We guys still got to go and do the final inspections on them anyway, but it's uh, it's like the second house on Tahoe Drive or whatever. Is it the West Block? Or yeah. Block, West Block? Yeah. And it's not, the homeowner we spoke to wasn't the one that called and complained. It was the lady next door. But they got, she has a storm drain on the other side of her property, but the water never makes it there because it was... They change the grade. Yeah, I think there's one every other lot yeah. after. And, I mean, you could see the fall from one property, and then it just levels out. And he even admitted he said that there, there people were back there because he moved in before those other houses were even built. And he said it was fine. Now, all of a sudden, it's a problem. Yeah. So. I mean, that, that becomes a code enforcement issue, and it should be on them when correct those yeah. issues if they're causing them. Yeah. I mean, he said that he was going to put add dirt himself. I told him I would have to speak to the director of operations and our engineer to see if he. I mean, he's willing to fix it himself, but yeah. I mean, it might change for the neighbors. Who knows? Yeah. Well. Yeah. I don't have a good. Uh, no. Good to say about that. There's really no win on it. Right. Yeah, I would just say that we have other priority projects at this point in time and that to take something on like this would take away from other priority projects that are um, needing the funds. Yeah. So, yeah, over 14 years of watering, it's going to adjust the grade a little bit. <laughs> so, yeah, is, should we have someone reach out to... Mr. Toth, or? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Move on to Public Works Project 9402, West 141st Place. I think it's the, what you guys found exactly what we thought happened. We, have, we, we jetted it, and the pipe is clean. It's it's uh it's been covered up. 
so uh, I, it's what did I say about six feet the end of the pipe is about six feet from the road we uh, probed it but then his culvert pipe going over his drive under his driveway facing that way I think that's where it's blocked at because there is a culvert pipe going over his under his driveway are you going to jet that out? We did already. Oh, did yeah, and it's clean. It's just, I think that corner's always not strong great because the bottom of that little interior, that radius is lower than his culvert, but I still think it wants to go to his culvert yeah. and stuff. But So if you can see, it's just sopping wet there. I mean, it, it was wet when we were over there and did it. I mean, we were able to get the jetter enough in there where it started to come out of the ground just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it's there somewhere. It's just we'd have to dig it up. Again. Is the back truck working okay? Yeah. Yeah, it's fine now. It's just, I mean, I thought, and Tyler mentioned it too, I mean, if we dug it up, I mean, we could maybe do a French drain type of deal. Like, we just we just did it on 126th place. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we just stuck some sock tile in there and, and put some rock over it. But, I mean, how much does the homeowner want to uh, stick in their yard up? Well, I'm 90% confident that he's the person who caused the yeah. problem. I, I mean, I can't remember what their initial problem was. Was it like their little mini retention pond they got there? Well, I mean, yeah, he's like it doesn't drain. Um, but I think I think he did this when he built that driveway. Yeah, I, I really feel like that dirt that was that's in that little retention area was from the initial ditch that was in front of the house because I do remember a ditch being there yeah I mean I think first and foremost that connection should be exposed um, yeah either restore the ditch line or put a casting on it but now you're talking about decently intrusive work yeah and which I don't think should be the town's responsibility no. I, I want to say that it was it was a year or two ago they mentioned this, and Tom was still here, and Tom told us to go over and look at it, but then he's like, we're, they wanted us to fill that in, that whole area in, and Tom's like, well, that's not really our responsibility to do, and then it was left. I don't think you could fill that radius in. I think you probably fill it in a little bit to maybe I, bring it even with the invert. I mean, I don't know going north. I don't know if there's even a pipe there. I, I'm, I don't know if the ditch got covered up, and it just... Because there's two culvert pipes at the two houses that are closest to 141st Street, mm -hmm. and then after that you lose it. And I tried looking for it, and I you, we we don't even see an outlet coming out of. Well, it's kind of a ditch. high point here. So Cottage Grove, I think, splits. It wants to drain north and south, which I think half of it's going to that radius. Yeah. And wants to get through his pipe and then south. And I mean, and then on the other side of his, on his neighbor's property, it's doing the same thing. It like. He used to have a ditch, but now adult, and then it starts going up, and then there is some culvert pipes up there too. But mm -hmm. I mean, the problem with these people, I don't know. I mean, would a basin yeah. fix it? I mean, it would just expose it a little bit, and we may have to do some residual grading at that corner right, to bring it up a little bit, and then figure out. I think his pipe is back pitched a little bit. We took shots on it, but I don't remember yeah. what it was now. Um, that's I think that's where it wants to go. Yeah, because I I was standing there while while Tyler was jetting it, and you could see the water flowing out of the culvert pipe going east, but then it would like suck itself back in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think his pipe will drain as long as there's actually a connection there now. I, I mean I th I think it drains somewhere because it's not always wet. Yeah. So it, I don't know if it's just like. I think going into his in. yard? I think it seeps in. Yeah. Like I can, and you can look at the arrow there, it just looks dark as heck, so it probably just sits there. Yeah. So, no. I don't know what the whole initial reason why they dug that big of a hole. I think it's always been there. I, just, I think that, that, that has always been there as far it, as I know. It's just maybe there was so much stuff that was in the yard, because I mean it was, wasn't kept up. Yeah, I mean, there's a new closed contour coming out of the 18 contours, but I imagine it's been there for a long time. But I, I, I know there's a pipe going from 
his yard to the park and then his culvert pipe going over his driveway. I, I, other than that, I don't know where there's any other pipes. I think it wants to go south. <laughs> so, I do too, but... And then, well, I mean, the fact that he essentially filled in where those two pipes meet. Yeah, and that's exactly what I think happened it's because I think it was just opened originally and it well, was not the water. Say, that that really connection has to be established again. Because even that... Even if it is back pitch, you get a little head on that pipe, it's going to go south. Mm-hmm. So the only thing that sucks is it, it's been repaved, so we would have to, if we wanted to put another culvert pipe in there, we would have to cut the road. Well, how, was that culvert in decent shape, the north-south one? I, I think so. I mean, it went, the jetter went right through there. I no say problem. we reestablish that opening then. Yeah. And I think it should be on the homeowner. I, I agree. I mean, he came in kind of complaining about the situation that he apparently caused, so yeah. I don't know what to say. I don't know. Have we heard from him since? No. He came in that one time and has been back since. He's a, he doesn't actually, he's, I think that parcel's rented. Yeah, it's a rental property. I, I oh. looked it up. It's rental. And that guy, every time we're out there messing around with it, the guy never comes out. So I don't think he really cares. Yeah, really cares about it. So <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think it was the owner that came. I think first time, yeah. Yeah. Identify that as a sure thing, and it's <clears throat> going to be something we ask the homeowner to reestablish. I'm probably going to need a letter from you stating the same so I can give that to Dave and start getting legal process moving forward. At least notifying the property owner of their obligation to reestablish, yeah. and then if they don't want to and potentially pursue legal obligations. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just figured the cheapest way to go would be just a sock tile if we had to. I mean, just so we could connect the two pipes together so the water would flow. Yeah. I mean, I don't think an opening is required anymore because I think that entire roadside ditch is gone. Yeah, it's gone. So, so it's just I a mean, matter of having access to it yeah. long term if that's the primary outflow point. I mean, because we could <laughs> dig enough up where we could just at least connect them two together so it'll, I mean, that's last case scenario, I would assume. Yeah. You so, put a play 90 on it if it works, I guess. Yeah. There's not a lot of water going to it. Oh, I know. But uh, it should be at least be tied in some form or oh. fashion. So we'll put a memo together and Send it out. All right. Thank you. Oh, man. I was trying to look up the uh, address on the GIS. For the property? Yeah, getting too fancy over here. It's uh, 9402 West 141st. I think it's actually on the agenda. Yes, yeah, on the public pro- 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 I'm having more iPad issues than anything. <laughs> Come on now. Thanks. You don't want them taken away. Yeah. <laughs> Quit listening and take them away. From yeah. <laughs> okay, getting on to new business. I do see a memo here that someone was working on Sunday. Is this something that we want to discuss right now? I mean, you don't have to, seeing as though the money that's budgeted won't likely even be available until mid-next year. Mm-hmm. So if you guys just want to kind of mull it over, I mean, the top three are probably the ones we've discussed the most in 2012, so they're not listed in any particular order. Yeah. Um, number one, cost estimate-wise, phase one, and that was 85 feet of pipe, some grading and whatnot, was um, around 44 grand. So include escalations from all these prices. This year, you probably can assume that project's 100 to 150, probably about three times the length. Started at six. That's on the first one. The first one. Um, second one, we had two. That's that checks uh, parcel. That's a larger scale project. Uh, we had two separate alternatives. Second one, 130, was for a partial replacement of the system. And then the top one, the 300K, um, would be everything all the way out to the lake. That's a pretty large chunk, and those costs have probably gone up as well. I was going to say, I would, I would expect that to be a lot more. Yeah. 
Pipe cost has gone up probably 75%, mm -hmm. if we can even get them in a timely fashion. And then Gibbons is kind of an unknown. Um, I think there's some responsibility to that depending on the history. We're kind of looking back in town files to figure out what happened to the whole lawsuit, see if we actually have access rights to maintain anything. I mean, the pipe is relatively new. It's probably yeah. 20 years old. It's just I think we're having some joint failures on yeah. it and whatnot. So that may be an easier fix than we think, yeah. minus, you know, replacing the culvert across 145th. Um, but we just got to keep on keeping on for that one and see where it goes. Yeah. Um, Woodland Hills, that was a new one from last meeting. It's essentially a singular line, 130th court cul-de-sac off of Dodd Street, north of Lakeshore Drive. Um, that is an easement from, yeah, the 64 plat. It's five foot on either lot line, so it's 10 foot total, and it outlets somewhere near Washington Street, is what we think. Yeah, it, like, flows, like, into the parking lot. Yeah. So, so that one, I guess, so you have a camera, we'll check it out. Um, it's an old system, obviously. If it went in in the 60s, things. Yeah, and the town. I, I, I talked to Dave this morning about that, and he said that he does remember that they did prepare somewhere down the road. They did it. I don't remember exactly when, but he said he, he remembered it. Yeah, I don't even know what it is. I heard it was clay. Yeah, it's clay tile. Is it like a six-inch pipe probably? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. So that's why Tony's kind of a little uh, on the fence about Cameron, and if it really is broke like the homeowner said. So, I mean, there are huge oak trees right on, like, literally right on top of it. Yeah, that would suck. Yeah. So, Which means you probably have a root yeah. right somewhere. So I would imagine that's going to be a bigger problem than, because that's the only. Just access-wise. Yeah. On that whole entire cul-de-sac, that's just that one. So. Yeah, there, there's not a lot of water drained into it, but it's more than you think, I think. So once we get some more information on that, we'll pass it along. And then fifth was the Schubert Dodge system. I think that does need to be repaired at some point and replaced. We just got to kind of figure out where it's at, what kind of condition it's in. Where exactly it connects into Meyer Manor system is my guess, but not 100% sure it actually goes there. Still think it might go under a building. So there's that. Um, and those are the five big guys from this calendar year. Got so. number six. Okay. Ooh. Just CCMG in general. Um, the area we, or the council, the Transportation Roads Committee. Um, selected was the subdivision north of 141st and, and the Shady, sh yeah, Shade, shade Subdivision. Um, many shades. That will probably also have a significant amount of <coughs> ditch line reestablishment as part of that project. Um, so that could also that would also be something to participate in. Yeah, that one's separated into two phases. It's actually a very large subdivision. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to try going in for CCMG in January to help fund it. We'll see if we can clear our full million dollars for it. And we'll do $2 million of the work to match it. So that one's under design right now as we speak. It has zero stormwater infrastructure right now, minus a couple cross culverts. That's about it. It's an old one. Just for the people that came in the meeting, that's my feeling. It's right. now at six <laughs> o'clock instead of six thirty. Yes, we found yes. that out. So. And there won't be a meeting next month. Did you discuss with the Cedar Creek yet? No, yeah, but no change. <laughs> but <laughs> she said yes, no change. So, no funding at all. so what we're looking at right now, what we're discussing is uh, the anticipated 2023 stormwater budget. Um, there are six prospective projects that are to be used within the budget. The estimated budget for the stormwater board is uh, $259,000. Of the six projects, the number one in no particular order at the top of the list is the Woods of Cedar Creek Phase 2. And so there's still going to need cost estimates, will need to be updated, and we will need to have all the easements to be acquired before any um, work would be taking place, but it is a priority for 2023. Thank you.
and that given the source of funding and how it comes in, this would, if any projects are selected, nothing would be undertaken until probably approximately mid next year. So it's really up to the board if you want to get into the nitty gritty and start priority. setting a priority list or if you want to think about it and we can discuss it in January because we're not going to have the money early anyways and they're not big projects that would take a lot of design work or anything like that so um, that may also give us a better idea of how or if materials are still issues for next construction season as well. I imagine they will be mm -hmm. um, but we'll get into bidding some other town projects and we'll have a better idea about some line item costs, especially related to pipe. And all these projects that you shortlisted, they would all have to be contracted out, correct? Most likely. Yeah. Probably could handle, well, Gibbons may be a smaller fix. Yeah. Depending on how the Cameron comes back, especially since it's plastic pipe, it's a lot easier to handle, obviously. So um, we can do cross culverts, not a problem. So that one may be one that we can handle in house, even Woodland Hills, maybe. But if that's, if we're getting into giant oak trees, it's going to be several thousand dollars just to remove those trees potentially. Um, Woods of Cedar Creek is likely a contractor one, and so is Woodland Shores. Yeah. There would be quotes. Same thing with CCMG. And CCMG, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. That'll be one of the big guys. When do you find out about CCMG after you submit it? At least two months, I think. Um, they, the first call of 2023, I think, opens on the 3rd of January and it closes on the 25th, 27th, something like that. Yeah. My memory serves me right. Um, we submitted the second call for 2022, probably two months ago. We still haven't heard back. Yeah. Something like that. We're supposed to hear back any time. So, yeah, they're trending two-ish months. Okay. So. And then we have to, once we get the money, the PO award, we have to get it out to bid mm -hmm. in four months. It has to be under contract. <laughs> in four months. In four months. Then they built. Just if you had a contract, also lose your money. So if we got it and we heard in <coughs> April 1st, that means we would have to get contracts signed and delivered by August 1st. So if it's a smaller project, it can get done this calendar season, calendar year, no problem. And that kind of sets up to when a bulk of, or at least some of the stormwater funds would be available anyway. So it kind of yeah. works out well. Are we going to add Utopia to this too? In what form? Oh, the yeah. the basin up there. Yeah. That's something I think you guys might be handling. So Utopia has a very old detention basin, and this has come before the board before. Technically, it's the subdivision's responsibility to maintain it because the lots actually extend back <laughs> into the center line of it, south of the Strax Pond this like L-shaped boomerang looking thing. Um, it's horribly overgrown right now. Mm. Like there are like probably three inch, four inch caliper trees growing in there. Um, and the uh, the primary outfall of that is like a, I don't know, 18, 24 inch CMP pipe that's just in rough, rough, rough shape. So that pond has kind of been a disaster in some recent history. A lot of the homeowners just, they're just tossing crap back into it too. They, yeah. That's Tim almost locks the toe out there because he stepped on a nail, yep. oh. and it went up right past his shoe, right past his foot. <laughs> um, yeah, people are throwing everything back there. It doesn't drain well. There's some discussion to try to get into there and chop everything down once the weather kind of gets freezing a little bit, so we can actually get something back there without it sinking. Um, and then really just trying to maintain it on an annual basis. We tried this probably five or six years ago, and I think we tried to get in there and clear it, but it hasn't been touched since, so it's all come back, and it blocks the primary outfall, and then it overflows yeah, this woman's property. That wasn't the 219 project through the federal government, was it, any of it? No. No? I didn't touch any of that. Nope. Mm. There was some debate about turning the drainage that's in the Strack Pond 
down and around to the ditch. But that was just an alternative that never got constructed. Because there's actually a, a lot of drainage area that goes through there. I mean, all of Monastery South goes through there. All the high school goes through there. Um, all of 133 Phase 1 fires into it. All of Strax, all of Summer Winds, at least Summer Winds and the Funeral Home have their own detention basins now, but there's a lot of water that flows through there. <laughs> and it just never dries up. So Tim and I went out there two weeks ago or so and just kind of yeah. checked it out. And really, the, the way we kind of got back on it, there's there's a sag point in Utopia Unit 5. And those two inlets actually drain into this low area. Well, the low area was so high that they were actually starting to bubble out and go down the street on Drummond. And we don't know what's going on. I think there's a restrictor in that there line, too. Restrictor in there. Which is the dumbest thing ever, but the inlet going into the pond is just clogged up with crap. I couldn't, we couldn't even find it. Yeah, I mean, so, it eventually goes down, but it yeah. takes forever. Not terribly pressing, but the fact that the Drummond inlets were starting yeah. to bubble out, it was a little weird. Yeah, I mean, he was out there. We, we went yeah. out there a couple of years ago, and had a six inch pump going for two days. Yeah. Just to get rid well, of it. Well, I think, it back, I think yeah. the, the basin back flows into yeah. it. So the fact that it just it just never drains down is a problem. Like it, it's got to clear out. Well, as long as you guys have a some type of plan. Yeah, they are just waiting for it to freeze over and then he's going to rent. That's what Tim said. He's hoping that something we can and get in there to chop it down. There's going to be a lot of debris, though. Yeah. Like a lot. So. <laughs> We'll so anybody needs mulch. <laughs> we'll be in the mulch business soon. Yeah, there's a national mulch shortage, so we're not giving it away. We're <laughs> <laughs> gonna start bagging it. <laughs> color we got to buy come to buy mulch for Ireland. And call yeah. the cover yeah. Yeah. and charge a whole bunch of money for it. Forty grand a truckload. Yeah. So yeah, that's on the winter radar. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Because I know we went over there and looked at it, and he didn't really, he had some ideas, but. Yeah, he, he was gung-ho to get out there, but he can't, he can't get in there right now. Well, and I mean, access isn't the greatest go. either, because there's really no easement that lead to it, and everybody's got fences up. And, and they're in the middle of still doing the water project in there, too, yeah, so. Yeah. Like a bomb went off in there. I mean, yeah. Yeah, we there. were in there today picking up some brush, and you can't barely even drive through there. No. Yeah, Gatlin's yeah, taking advantage of just going doing what they want. So, yeah, those are those projects we can discuss in January. I'm going to mull them over over the holiday weekends. I'm sure everybody will be thinking of them. I mean, realistically, are we going to even be able to only address three of these five, three of the six? Two. Maybe two. I would say pick two. Two would be, <clears throat> and maybe an alternative, yeah. but I would not plan on doing the alternative. Yeah, I mean they're they're all to some extent designed and you know in some form or fashion we have to update all the estimates and we can see how the money's coming in throughout the year and you know deal with them. I mean I know commingling of funds is a no no I'm sure to a certain degree but could the Schubert Dodge Street get bundled into some other capital project or not? Is it possible? Years down the line, maybe? Yeah, when we're doing work in that area, I guess. I mean, I, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Nothing, that, that, that one's kind of in a no man's land. It's not a whole lot around there. Well, we don't even really have a solution yet. Yeah. No, we don't. It's just, that's just on there the, more as a note. That one is five for a reason. Um, we don't know about yeah. it. We've talked okay. about it for a while. Is it something that I wanted to keep under everybody's radar? Just that wouldn't like really going to be. Yeah. yeah. No, that's with, with, so with the C, when I mentioned the CCMG project, that would be a commingling of funds where we're addressing that subdivision that has no stormwater infrastructure at the same time as we're utilizing a state grant to help get the roads paved or repaved. Yeah, historically with those kind of combo projects where some are roads, some are sanitary, some are storm, I think we pull from multiple phone funds. Yeah. Just, gotcha. Definitely not just this. We'll actually break them out by use and Sue Hayes will figure out where we can get stuff. Yep. Is there going to be
going to be a large ask from the stormwater board for the CCMG. Decent sized ask. <laughs> okay. It's about a two million dollar project with fifty fifty split, so millions on us. You can get it all done for a million. You don't need any more money. I don't think I got a dredge. <laughs> Which is also helping to create creativity. Come on. Can't give you no chance we can give them. Um, so we'll have better numbers in January with that project as well. I just would rather it be set up as not like an over promise than under delivered. And if people are counting on something in their own personal backyards. Yeah. So I say we table it till January. We might have a better idea of, you know, what's coming down the pipe, some estimates. Material availability. Yeah. Contractor availability. Yeah. Be interesting. Everybody was so busy at the beginning of the year, but towards the end of the year I think some contractors got a little light. So it's kind of I don't know. Okay. So that's new business. Moving on to public comment. If you have any comments, please approach the podium. State your name and your address. Brian Tiemens, 6814 West 142nd Place, Cedar Lake, Woods of Cedar Creek. Well, I would like to ask, when do you plan on sending out the letters requesting easement rights so we can alert our community that they are coming? Can you tell us when that's going to happen? I cannot <clears throat> at this time because the board has not selected that project as a for sure thing that it's doing. But once we get closer to that project becoming a possibility or reality, we will send out those notices then. Can you give us a heads up when to expect them? I expect you'll time. be at the subsequent meetings coming forward, and you will you will hear when we are sending those out. So approximately March, April, ballpark. I can't say possibly, but no guarantee. Okay, thank you. So just to reiterate, kind of since um, you came since our meeting started earlier than 6.30. It's, we have a priority list of projects. We have a limited budget for 2023 calendar year. The Woods of Cedar Creek project is one of six projects at our priority. I probably, not to make any promises, but it's one of the ones that I would probably foresee being um, moving forward as opposed to some of these larger projects. And just so you're aware as well, of, of that total budget, that doesn't just land on the stormwater board's plate in January. That's a, I don't know if you want to explain that a little bit, Chris, how yeah. the, the funds get accrued throughout the year, right? So the stormwater board is funded not by taxes, but by a stormwater fee that everybody pays on a monthly basis. So therefore, their budget comes in on a monthly basis. So they they won't be delivered, and the money that they would require to do the project in the first month of the year, it will be something that they have to build up cash reserves before they can execute the project. Which is okay because we're usually waiting on the thaw and you know spring to to be done, et cetera, et cetera. Things to Correct. dry up a little bit. So. Okay, any online Zoom communication? Nope. Okay, with all that being said, I'll, we'll adjourn this meeting tonight. So thank you very much all for coming.